Welcome to Why the Maya Picked 2012. I'm Thomas Rosetto, and let's get right to it. The astronomy that will unfold in the sky over the Maya on the winter solstice of 2012 is the key to understanding why the Maya restart their calendar on this exact day. Almost all calendars are based on astronomy, and it appears that this is also true for the Maya calendar, although in a rather spectacular way. And it is important to point out right up front that this astronomy presents no danger to us at all. We are not going to fall into a black hole or be inundated with a high level of cosmic rays. In my view, this rare astronomical event will not cause anything unusual to happen to us. And yet, it is my opinion that the Maya's timeless message of rebirth potentially leads us on an exceptionally rewarding path of self-discovery. But that is a subject for another time. In this screenshot, we see that the sun will be in the middle of the dark rift, the Maya birth canal, on the day of the winter solstice. In just a few minutes, I will go over why this day can be said to contain the triple rebirth of the sun. We also see that there are four planets forming the horizontal crossbar of the sacred tree, and the sun is virtually exactly in the middle of these planets. This is also quite significant as to why the Maya picked this exact day to restart their calendar. To understand this better, let's go over it a little bit at a time. We will be using the viewpoint of Izapa, Mexico, in the state of Chiapas, which became the birthplace of the Maya Long Count calendar just over 2,000 years ago. Maya experts say this because this region contains the oldest stone carvings of Long Count calendar dates. I think that it is crucial to investigate 2012 from the viewpoint of the Maya themselves, but this point is often overlooked by other researchers. Yes, the actual location of the Maya on the surface of the Earth is important when examining the astronomy, and, in addition to that, their cultural viewpoint is also very important. Both the calendar and the Maya's timeless metaphorical stories about transformation and rebirth have an astronomical basis, and this is why understanding the astronomy can be so helpful. Let's start off by asking one of the most important questions. What was the driving question behind the creation of the Long Count Calendar? To help us understand this question, let's go way back in time and imagine being a Maya sky watcher 2,000 years ago. With excellent viewing conditions, which the Maya certainly had, we would clearly see the spectacular section of the sky containing the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Here we see a massive ball of bright lights with a dark swath intruding into it, and this swath is called the Dark Rift. There is nothing else in the night sky that looks even remotely like this section of the sky. It is quite stunning and very intriguing. We would be drawn to it, and stories would be created about it. For the Maya, the massive ball of bright lights at the center of the galaxy was seen as the pregnant belly of the Mother of Creation, and the Dark Rift was seen as the birth canal. After careful observation, we would learn that the sun traveled across the dark rift in late November. It would do this once a year, and each year it would do this a little bit closer to the day of the winter solstice. This would lead us to ask, what year in the distant future will have the sun in the middle of the galactic birth canal on the same day as the winter solstice? Our careful observations and calculations would show us that this special event would happen in the years around 2012. This is the obvious and natural way in which the Maya were attracted to a point in time over 2,000 years in their future. In another essay, you can easily learn about the stunning precision that was required to make the Long Count calendar. And yes, I do mean stunning. For those of you who want a better understanding of why the sun travels across the dark rift, let's take a closer look at the way it works. Throughout the year, due to the orbit of the Earth around the sun, from the viewpoint of Earth, the sun appears to be continuously moving slowly against the background stars, and it is this apparent motion that creates the visual illusion of the sun crossing the dark rift, since the dark rift is part of the fixed background of the stars. Let's examine this diagram and see what's involved. As we just learned, the Maya metaphorically saw the dark rift as the galactic birth canal. It is shown as the X at the top of the diagram. 
imagine it to be very far away and fixed in its position. The sun also does not move. Only the earth is moving. Once a year, the earth orbits into a position where you can draw a line from the earth through the sun and into the middle of the dark rift. This creates the visual image of the sun being in the middle of the galactic birth canal. Here is another diagram that helps explain the apparent motion of the sun. Again, the dark rift is the X at the top. Let's consider what we see on three consecutive days. On day one, the sun is seen to the right of the dark rift. On day two, the sun is seen in the middle of the dark rift. And on day three, the sun is seen to the left of the dark rift. So we see that as the Earth moves to the right, it creates the visual illusion that the Sun is moving to the left, across the dark rift. Now, let's examine three screenshots of these three days in 2012. Here is the first day. Here is the second day. And here is the third day. See how precise this is? Just one day makes a difference in the perfect timing of the galactic rebirth of the Sun. Since this point is so important and so often misunderstood, I want to be perfectly clear. The Sun does not actually cross the dark rift. It only appears to do so from our viewpoint on Earth. But it is this viewpoint that gives us our experience, and it is our experience that is so important to us. So why can this day be said to contain the triple rebirth of the sun? Ancient cultures considered the daily sunrise a rebirth of the sun because the sun was seen to be dead during the night. Yet at dawn, it rises above the ground and is reborn into our world, bringing forth the light and heat we all need to stay alive. Ancient cultures also considered the time of the winter solstice as the rebirth of the sun in the time frame of the year since the length of the day will now start to grow longer. If the days were to continue to grow shorter, the cold winter would only tighten its grip and we would all perish. So this rebirth is also vital. For the Maya, the third rebirth occurs when the sun moves into the middle of the galactic birth canal, the dark rift, and again, this can be referred to as the galactic rebirth of the sun, and it happens once a year. So the three rebirths of the sun can be referred to as the daily rebirth, the solstice rebirth, and the galactic rebirth. A triple rebirth of the sun occurs in the years around 2012 when all three rebirths happen on the same calendar day. By the way, the solstice rebirth happens once every tropical year, and the galactic rebirth happens once every sidereal year. A sidereal year is about 20 minutes longer than a tropical year, and this difference is caused by the slow wobble of the Earth's axis. This is what causes the two rebirths to come together in the years around 2012. I go into this more in my other essays, but for right now, let's just continue. My final point involves the sacred tree, which, as you have seen, is made out of two crossbars, the path of the sun and the planets, and the dark rift. The sacred tree is part of the fixed background of the stars, and, again, as we have already seen, it just so happens that on December 21st, 2012, at high noon, the sacred tree will be perfectly oriented in the sky over the Maya. The position of the sun in the middle of the dark rift on the same day as the winter solstice is what creates the triple rebirth of the sun. This is the reason the Maya looked towards the years around 2012, but since there is more than one year when this happens, I looked for a reason why the Maya picked 2012. I think it is the special configuration of the sacred tree that completes the story about why the Maya picked this exact day. In my opinion, researchers that overlook the sacred tree are missing a crucial factor. It is the additional consideration of the sacred tree that snaps the date of interest from the years around 2012 to this precise day. When we take into consideration both the triple rebirth of the sun unfolding during the day in the sky over the Maya and the special configuration of the sacred tree, with Venus leading the sun and the planets to the west 
across the sky over the Maya, we see that there is absolutely no doubt that December 21st, 2012 offers an excellent solution to the driving question behind the creation of the Long Count calendar. How can all this be a coincidence? I find it to be completely mind-blowing. That concludes this video. You can learn more about the astronomy of 2012 and read my opinion about what the Maya's metaphorical message of rebirth means at 2012essays.com. For those of you who want even more, you can read my free online booklet, Mystical 2012. Did the Maya shamans discover a mystical view of reality? You can read that at mystical2012.com or order it at amazon.com. I'm Thomas Rosetto. Thanks for watching.